This is Master Gio at Exotica, New Jersey 2018 with the legendary Tommy Pistol. How you doing, man? Pretty good. How are you guys doing? Awesome. So this is your first time at Exotica, New Jersey, right? Yeah, this is definitely the first time at Exotica, New Jersey. The only other Exotica I was at was in Chicago, but I was there for work, so this wasn't a priority. Okay. And I actually, I think I went to the one in LA. Okay. Just kind of stopped by, but again, like, it wasn't like a main attraction or like, so this is like the big one for me. So. Enjoying it so far? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I missed yesterday, Friday, because I got in too late and everything. And I mean, these are always like a, a gamble and just getting to see everybody and like fans coming by, it's awesome, you know, so it's worth it. Oh, it's a return to the East Coast for you, right? Yeah, yeah, I grew up in Astoria, Queens, um, and my brother lived out in New Jersey and like uh, the guys uh, that I used to work out here uh, kind of started out with, besides like it was Burning Angel and then like uh, like facial abuse and ghetto gaggers and those guys like I kind of learned a lot from working with them out here in Newark and everything so coming back here it's like coming home so <laughs> all right so how did you end up uh, getting into the business uh, how I got into the business basically uh, I loved porn right when I, I I got to the point of like buying it and having it I would just like hand off bags to my friends because I was like, I can't hide all this. <laughs> so, my friend Doug Sackman, who I met through Troma Entertainment, because I was doing sketch comedy and that's how we connected. He knew Joanna Angel, so basically, when I found out that he knew Joanna and I knew the burningangel.com, I was like, wow, I wonder, can I ever do this? And then Doug, uh, found out from Joanna that their first movie, BurningAngel.com, the movie, was happening. And he's like, wow, if you, I would love to be in it, audition, whatever I gotta do. I wonder, I have to know, I have to know. And Joanna gave me a shot, and her first scene was my first scene, and then the rest, whoa, the rest is history. Were you, were you guys nervous for the first scene? Um, the funny thing about it is like, the dude shooting the scene at, was pushed off for almost a month. Like things kept happening. So the day we were gonna shoot, something else happened, like the hotel we were gonna go to. It was a themed hotel. So all the plumbing was fucked up. She's like, maybe we could like do it another week. I was like, no, <laughs> no, we have to shoot this. Cause I kept shaving my body. She's like, yeah, you gotta be hairless. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I was like, no more shaving. So my boy Alex, who sponsors me with his t-shirts, Amplify.com, um, we, I called him because we were in a band at the time. He was my drummer. And they were like, oh, can you, uh, can we use your loft? And he's like, yeah. So we went to the loft and then we went to the roof. And the roof had like some dope like graffiti on it. And you oversee like New York and everything. And we're like, we're gonna shoot on the roof. And then uh, while we're up there, we're, there were people there who lived in the building. We we're like, look, we can't tell you to leave, but if you don't mind, can we can we do stuff? And they were like, yeah. So while we were shooting, they kept texting people to come up. So when we were done with our scene. There was like 30 people watching us. Holy shit. <laughs> and I was like, if that's not a test, I don't know what it is. And you pass it to fine colors, bro. Right. <laughs> this is history, like I said. A lot of the stuff I really like you do is you've done a lot of like the porn, uh, the horror uh, parodies. How yeah. fun are those to shoot? Those are amazing. Like the first one we did, the Repenetrator. Like that thing, we've done live shows of that. Of that sh and the trick, like. The Exorcist, we did a triple Exorcist. So we actually did like a live show of a penetrator and the Exorcist. We did like three shows in Chicago. We did shows in New York. Like that thing gets talked about still. And like Gordon Lewis, uh, Lewis who like wrote Reanimator, like he knows about it. Like it's fucking awesome. Like for Evil, De Evil Head, 
the fact I got to play Bruce Campbell. That's awesome. <laughs> and like, kind of do the, my best impression. Actually went in AVN for it, it was fucking amazing. Like The Walking Dead, I wrote, directed with Joanna, and like, <coughs> this movie has done amazing in sales. And it's awesome. Whenever we get to do it, I love doing it. I love horror. Like, this is actually my first horror film that I wrote, directed, and starred in. It's my yeah, I wanted movie. to ask you about that. Tell yeah. me a little bit about that. I always loved horror movies. And so the gruesome death of Tommy Pistol happened. I did a short called Attack of the Staff Spider. Have a staff infection breaks out on a porn set. It gives every, turns everybody into zombies. And I made that short, and it got in a Backstreet Film Festival, uh, and it won some awards. And then it was basically like, why don't you write a whole feature around it? So it took four years to make, but um, it's a vignette. It's about Tommy P. He wants to be famous, but he finds out uh, in his dreams he succeeds, but he shouldn't ignore the real things in life that matter and everything. So it took four years to make. I made it for less than six thousand uh, dollars. Caleb Emerson, who made, wrote and directed *Die You Zombie Bastards*, uh, Mia Tyler, their, uh, Steven Tyler's daughter, uh, Kimberly Kane, like a bunch of great people are stuck with me. Tom Devlin did all the special effects. Uh, I owe it to all those people. Matt Holder did was my cinematographer. And uh, they just, they knew, like, we made it when we can. Right, right. And it was kind of like, after, like, a few years, you're like, should I finish this? What's going on? And I'm glad I did. Because they got into festivals, uh, grind plantation. The winner of Poly Grind, it won, a, it won an award in 2011, which basically got me the contract to Vicious Films. Uh, breaking Glass Pictures, so I got that festival got me distribution. And what sucked, being I was also new to it, I was uh, trying to promote it and get the word out. And the movie sending it out to get reviews, it actually got pirated a week before I signed my contract. And I had a like I saved it by adding like years of like uh, BTS when I did sketch comedy when I was in a band and everything so they ended up still picking it up so you know it's my first movie mainstream that I haven't done another one but as of now but I am working on stuff and I have been doing more stand-up comedy and everything so porn has been amazing to me and I love it and will always honor it and appreciate it but also, I'm always going to be trying to venture out and do more things soon, so. That's cool. So you have any projects lined up? Uh, right now, I've been doing uh, kind of a lot of writing, doing more open mics. So that's, I think that's the path I'm going to go. Like, I'm good with timing and comedy. And, like, I, I obviously, after all these years, like, I realize, like, I have a certain personality to... And it works on stage, live, or performing. So I think that's where I'm going to be start doing more is more stand up and kind of. I also think it would be cool to have somebody who is in a genre like this to have also be grounded and be able to talk about sex and not be disgusting. And I'm also a parent, so it's a weird like I have, I'm a dad. I have two kids, so I think it's a cool mix to like really throw a wrench in whatever people think about this industry and, and kind of like bring it to light that we're very normal and funny and good honest people and a lot of people don't expect that right 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 yeah there's a lot of misconceptions especially from the mainstream yeah and i think it's awesome now that you know porn is like a lot of people in adult like stormy daniels are you know, they're coming out and people are starting to see them in a different light. And now a lot of people in Hollywood, like Kevin Spacey and shit like that, it's funny how, like, a lot of them are being called out for being perverts and scumbags and everything. And it's like, ha-ha, <laughs> ah, it's not just us. It's all these other fuckers, too. And people are starting to realize that, and that's fucking awesome. So True, man, true. All right, man, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Any final words? 
Uh, just, you can follow me on Twitter, uh, at Tommy Fissel. You can follow me on Instagram, official underscore Tommy underscore Pistol. And if you want to see my uh, OnlyFans content, it's a lot of, like, stuff you'll never see anywhere else, solo and stuff like that. So if you like me, just for me, you can visit my uh, OnlyFans.com slash Tommy Pistol. And my friend who sponsors me, my shirts, AmplifyNYC.com. You can check out all his shirts here and everything. So, and just, I want to thank everybody for still buying porn and supporting the adult industry. We're good people. You know, we're just freaks. And at conventions like this, people get to, like, kind of shed that skin they want to do and be themselves. <coughs> And meet, and meet the people that they want to meet, that they appreciate. We appreciate you. So thanks, everybody, for coming by to Exotica. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tommy. It's Thank been you. an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much, Steve.